at this time, I would like to call Marita Bisenkowskis to the podium, please. And I would invite uh, all to please stand for the national anthems of the United States of America, the Republic of Lithuania, and please remain standing for the invocation. Want a mic? Oh, sure. I'll just stand and just leave it there. Okay. Thank you. And you're welcome to join in. Of course. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fine all the ripples we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does the star-spangled banner Please remain standing. Father <coughs> the invocation will be given by a senior priest in, I, I can't call you in residence because you're everywhere, okay? <laughs> so our senior priest here at St. Michael's and at St. Joseph's, Father Al Butler. Thank you, John. You're welcome. We take a moment to pause, remembering that memories are the conscience of a grateful heart. There are many grateful hearts in this hall this evening, many memories, by the homeland, but also at St. Casimir, their own community, and now very much a part of our community here, very important part. We want to keep also in our thoughts and prayers those very much of need, not the basis of life, but also those who need respect of human dignity, human personhood, whether it be refugees, whether it be foreigners, be immigrants, whoever they may be, minorities. That we all see ourselves before God the Father as equal, his children. And as the Father, he grants to us this food and drink to partake of, that we might be more nourished, to go forth this evening and every day of the lives we have been given to us and will continue to be given to us until he calls us home. To be worthy of name Christian, to bear his name to others, give witness, give love, and give service. And for those who have paid this meal and this celebration, 
We also ask God's graces and blessings, and we do so through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Marita Bizinkauskas. I am the Knights of Lithuania Council One President, and I'm on the National Knights of Lithuania Board. Žemė Lietuvos, ažuolai žaliuos. In the soil of Lithuania, mighty oaks will grow. This tree is very symbolic of the history of Lithuania, which I would like to briefly share with you now. The Roman historian Tacitus made reference to these Baltic people in the first century AD. In 1236, Mindaugas united these people into one nation, Lithuania, and was crowned king in 1256 by Pope Innocent IV. The oak was planted. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania thrived for centuries, and the borders of Lithuania at one time stretched from the Baltic Sea in the north all the way to the Black Sea. The oak grew stronger. The joint Commonwealth of Lithuania and Poland solidified the Catholic faith in Northern Europe and allowed them strength to fight off the Teutonic invaders. And this great oak flourished. However, they could not fight off the power of Tsarist Russia, and Lithuania and the Baltic people were absorbed into Russia in 1795. This oak was cut down, but the acorns were scattered throughout the land. A country is identified by its borders, language, and culture. Russia tried to annihilate these borders, but the people knew where they were. They forbid the speaking and writing of the Lithuanian languages, but the villagers still spoke it in their homes, taught their children to read with books printed in Prussia, and smuggled into the country under the cover of darkness. They kept history alive through songs, dances, traditions, secretly handed down through the generations. And those Lithuanians who managed to escape to the United States brought this love and devotion with them to their new country. Lithuanian oaks were planted in the coal mines of Pennsylvania and here in the factories of Brockton. At the end of World War I and the collapse of the Russian monarchy, the people of Lithuania formed the Seimas, a parliament, and on February 16, 1918, 100 years ago, declared themselves an independent republic. What a bold move for a nation whose language was suppressed, and yet, the declaration was proudly written in this dead language. Lithuanian is still spoken today. Those acorns grew into many, many more oaks. Unfortunately, the two decades of independence were cut short by World War II, and Lithuania once again found itself under the Russians, only this time communists. No matter, the desire for independence was deeply rooted in the hearts of the people. In the late 1980s, a period of glasnost and perestroika was declared by Gorbachev, and a little more freedom was allowed. The brilliant patriots of the Lithuanian Communist Party asked and received permission from Moscow to be an independent Communist Party, not necessarily tied to Moscow. The permission was granted in the Lithuanian Communist Party declared themselves independent from the Soviet Communist Party in Moscow. And then, on March 11th, 1990, they declared the country of Lithuania independent from the Soviet Union. And Vytautas Landsbergis was chosen the first president of the restored republic. What a masterful move. The era of the Lithuanian Republic was restored but not without bloodshed. When the eyes of the world were focused on the beginning of the Gulf War, the furious Soviets sent tanks into Vilnius to surround the radio and television tower in order to quash this independence. When news went out, the residents of Vilnius formed a human chain around the tower, linking arms and singing, Žemė Lietuvos, Ažolai Žaliuos, in the soil of Lithuania, mighty oaks will grow. 
The people thought the tanks would be restrained by the human shield, but the order shoot to kill was given, and 13 people perished there. The radio station in Kauna sent messages out to the free world telling them what happened. Our Brockton native, Lucia Bashkauskas, was brave enough to stay in Kaunas reporting on the invasion to the free world. However, help from the outside was slow to arrive. No matter, the desire for freedom was greater than any adversary, and the Republic of Lithuania battled on. Today, Lithuania is respected on the world stage as a member of NATO and a member of the European Union and will be one of the few sites of the worldwide cyber security center in the coming years. Today, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Republic of Lithuania with our St. Casmer and Lithuanian Heritage Day, we can reflect on the contributions of the Lithuanians here in this wonderful city. Brockton can boast that Council One of the Knights of Lithuania, an organization which celebrates 105 years this summer, was established here. The Lithuanian village was the center of the community for a century with beautiful St. Casimir Church, the spiritual and in many ways the cultural center for 110 years. Here in the village we had Lithuanian bakeries, Kilkus with its brick oven black bread baked on Arthur Street, and Bellevue Avenue Bakery with delicious Tuesday bagels. Samolis's Market, where you could buy most staples. Zinki's Market, where you purchase the tastiest fresh kielbasa and pickles from the barrel. And Mrs. Cassetta's Dress Shop. But I think most important was the Mishkinis Drugstore. It was very important, not just for prescriptions, but it was the only place to purchase grain alcohol. <laughs> so the ladies could make their homemade krupnikas a honey spice liqueur and other herbal medicines. <laughs> and let's not forget the Sandara Club. The Sandara was established early in the 1900s as a life insurance provider and offered its members one of the few places outside of the North End in Boston where you could get a delicious pizza or a homemade burger smothered in onions which would melt in your mouth. It's heartwarming to know that generations of families still live here. Our grandparents gave us a love of our Lithuanian traditions and heritage, but taught us to love this wonderful country even more. In Tukas Playground, there stands a memorial honoring those Lithuanians of Brockton who died in service to their country. The motto that grew out of independence was planted in the hearts of Lithuanians long ago. Wherever they live, you can be assured of flowers in the garden, a warm welcome when you visit, and a song at the ready. And here, I'm sure with the help of Donuti and those of you who know, we'll sing that little song, the one they sang around the radio tower. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And now I would like to present to you Donuta Mileka, who will discuss the importance of flax. As you can see, she has a beautiful display here and a lot of traditions surrounding this most miraculous plant. Donuta? Good evening. I am very excited and happy to share my project here. As you see, I have it all on display. Talk into this microphone, maybe. And uh, um, I have sheets on a table, please find and, and read. I, I won't go through all the history of flax and uh, I would like to tell a couple little stories about um, uh, traditions and um, uh, how important this beautiful, fragile plant, Linus in Lithuanian, 
flax plant, how important it was. It's been grown 4,000 years. And that was the one of the main plant fibers that all the clothes were made, all table linens, all the beddings, and it has very rich and um, um, rich traditions in Lithuanian folklore. There are lots of stories and tales and rituals that come from thousands of years ago. And actually, while I was preparing all this uh, presentation, I was trying to find the stories to read more about it because when I was, gr I was growing up, I, I used to hear, my mother used to tell um, how she used to grow flax, how she used to pull the flax and uh, break the flax, but I actually I didn't get to do it and I didn't see how it's actually done. I've seen those old tools kind of in the attic, somewhere else, you, you know, that I used to bring to school for the museum but they, they weren't used anymore. And uh, here I am, I'm pulling out all, <laughs> all these tools from the attic, whatever I could find and, and bring here. Um, anyway, uh, I came across some, uh, some um, stories uh, that flax was, um, it even had its own god to um, helping to grow it. The girls used to pray, um, special prayers and rituals to this big and old Lithuanian god way before Christianity. And uh, I came across this uh, uh, Polish historian um, who, uh, who wrote um, a book about old Lithuanian gods and um, there, was, there was a prayer to this god Vaizgantas. It's actually quite quite interesting um, ritual that the tallest girl would stand on a bench or uh, a chair on one foot holding in one hand she's holding uh, a piece of uh, linden bark where they used to make uh, visuals like a shoe um, old-fashioned shoe uh, that the villagers used to wear yeah. and in another hand she's holding a picture of um, beer and at the same time she has bread in her skirt or apron and she's trying to balance on this one foot and she has to be stable because it all depends how the flax is going to grow and she's praying to this God saying dear God Vaishgantas help my flags grow as tall as I am now because she's standing on a, on a chair and she's the tallest in the group. <laughs> And, and she has to, to stand, so, so after she's done praying, saying that help, help my flags grow as tall as I am, and uh, uh, so we, we don't walk naked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, then she drinks the, the pitcher of beer, pours another one, pours out for the, the god Vaishgantas, and throws the bread out for other little gods that they all would help to <laughs> to grow her flax so nobody back there can hear you okay. nobody can hear me <laughs> this one okay <laughs> i'll try to stay here <laughs> Okay, so that's that's one of the, the stories. And the girls were the ones who prayed because it was very important for them because they proce processed the flax fibers to make all these beautiful linens and get ready for marriage and fill their uh, hope chests full of beautiful linens when they get married. And uh, another um, ritual uh, during winter solstice, there were um, belief that who walks the, the longest route, who, who rides, they, they used to take long rides, long walks, that also helped to, supposedly helped to, to grow the, the good flax harvest. And all this flax was very important for, for fiber to make all these linens. So um, 
also there were lots of lots of songs written about the process, about growing flax. They used to sing planting flax, they used to sing harvesting, they used to sing processing. Uh, Lithuanians in general like to sing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, here I, I would like to demonstrate a couple of songs which uh, some of them are very romantic because usually girls working on spinning, weaving all these beautiful linens, they dreaming what their future life gonna be and uh, who is that special one and uh, so <coughs> I would like to to sing this, this song is about how um, how the girl was uh, pulling flax, flax always was pulled the fiber flax because they tried to use the whole length not to waste any any fibers so this girl was pulling flax and she after she was done she was washing her hands at the sea and her ring got washed away she lost her ring in a in a sea and she was so upset she was crying and here comes a young boy on a horse and uh, and she he is asking why why are you crying why why are you not happy and um, when he found out what happened, he says, okay, hold my horse, I'm gonna find that ring. <coughs> so here is the song. have another song that I would like to invite Marita to help me. <laughs> this song is also about pulling flags. The, the girl is pulling flags. She is loading the wagon, but her heart feels she, she is doing all this not alone, no. but her heart is still feeling very alone. Yes. Something is missing. Someone. And she is oh. laying the flags to red. <laughs> and um, and she's singing. She's whining. And it's still <laughs> something is not enough. <laughs> yes. She says, when I don't see him, I'm, I'm nervous. When I see him, I'm nervous. If he would only <laughs> once would walk me home. And when nobody sees, he would hug me and kiss me. Maybe then my heart would be, I wouldn't be so nervous and don't feel alone. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very fun old popular song. Kaškovi struksta, kaškovi snega na. Linelių skūjų ne viena, nainas nainojų ne viena. Bet ir dainelį kaškovi struksta, 
кашко весна гана, кай не мотал ёдня раму, кай Another story that I would like to, just a short little story to share, uh, that flax was believed to be very protective from evil spirits too. And um, there was a story, a folk tale, how um, flax actually saved two girls from, from, um, from a couple evil boys. Who, <laughs> who were, you know, the, the girls walking to the dances and um, two boys passed them and they said, oh, they look so handsome. If they would ask, we would marry them. <laughs> and of course, they heard that. So they, when they got to the dances, uh, they dancing, dancing, and uh, the boys came and they danced with them and everything, and those girls suddenly notice there's something wrong with this picture. It's something, su something doesn't look right. And they realize those were two devils. And uh, they wanted to leave. They, they started running and the boys followed them. And uh, the girls ran into old lady's house. And the old lady understood what's going on. And she, she took a bunch of flax fiber and she was standing in a doorway, would not let them in. And she says, okay, if you can listen to the flag story from the seed all the way to the linen, if you can listen to every detail, then you can come in. And she started telling, okay, there comes the process, you know, how the, li the, the flax seed was planted, then how long it took to start growing, when it was blooming, then um, when it was ready after 100 days, the, the, the plant was ready to be pulled. Okay, then we pulled the plant and then we had to dry it before we wrap it. Then we had to lay it on the ground for dew ratting or put it in a puddle, like a big puddle to rot. Ratting is practically rotting the stem to, to be able to separate the, the fiber from the, the core. And so, okay, after that, you have to dry the, the, the fiber again. And then it goes into breaking. Okay, after you break, it goes to scutching, to hackling, and all kinds of other process of spinning and weaving and she kept telling that story until the rooster started crowing and that means the sun is up and the devil loses all the powers when the sun comes comes up so the girls were saved so the flag saved the story so i i would be very happy to walk you through all that process i promise it's not going to be that long <laughs> And uh, from all the seed, the seed all the way to the linen. So uh, you are very welcome to, to come to my table and I'll be very happy to demonstrate all, all the details. Thank you. Thank you, Donati, for a wonderful presentation. And please don't come and take your time. Look, look over all of this. It's fascinating, quite fascinating.